the state of Georgia versus Travis McMichael, jury verdict form. Count one, malice murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, guilty. Oh. Count two, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Travis McMichael, guilty. State of Georgia versus William R. Bryan. Count three, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, William R. Bryan, guilty. Count four, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, William R. Bryan, guilty. The state of Georgia versus Greg McMichael, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. Count three, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. Count four, felony murder. We, the jury, find the defendant, Greg McMichael, guilty. We remember those, uh, um, the convictions that were laid down for those three that were involved in the murder of Ahmed Arbery back in November. But now there's, as we mentioned before, there is another federal hate crimes uh, trial that is going on. And the only reason that trial is going on is because the plea deal that we did mention a few weeks ago was rejected by that judge at the behest of Arbery's family. So now they're looking at whether or not there was hate, uh, there was there was a hate involved in their motivations for doing this. Now the plea deal was going to allow them to not have this trial, so that they could say, "Yeah, we'll plead guilty, but we don't want to talk about our hate." Sure, we'll plead guilty, and then we'll get to spend 30 years of our life sentences in federal prison, which is a lot more cushy than the state prison. So those were the those were the criminal charges in the state. Now they're dealing with the federal crimes. Now now that they have to listen to the things that they've said, we are seeing them. Let's see some of these things that these three used to talk about before they committed that murder. So specifically, this is an FBI agent is, is testifying at the trial now federally. Specifically, the intelligence analyst said, data gathered by investigators shows that all three men frequently use the N word and other derogatory language in text and social media messages and routinely associated the black community with criminality, unsurprising. Full moon brings out the worst of those savages, I guess. I hate those bastards, they ruin everything. Travis McMichael, the son, allegedly messaged a friend about black people two months before he fired the shots that killed Arbery in the street. In another message before the shooting, McMichael wrote, we used to walk around committing hate crimes all day. We used to walk around committing hate crimes all day in a hate crime trial about whether or not they did this in the middle of the, this, uh, this in neighborhood. Continuing. In at least one instance, prosecutors previously said the younger McMichael has called black people animals, criminals, monkeys, and subhuman savages. Again, more unsurprising evidence here. The FBI agent also walked jurors through several conversations involving the younger McMichael, including one where he allegedly blamed effing inwards running the show when he was having trouble getting his commercial driver's license. Sounds like you're a failure and you blame it on other folks. Continue on, another text, McMichael seemed to appreciate a blackface Halloween costume meant to resemble Trayvon Martin, because that's classy as well. Also, prosecutors previously said that the elder McMichael, old man Michael, made a negative comment about the 2015 death of Julian Bond. Of course, as a black civil rights activist and former Georgia State Representative. Bad, he said, I wish he'd been put in the ground years ago. He's nothing but trouble. Those blacks are nothing but trouble, McMichael allegedly told a witness while he was still himself involved in law enforcement. So you got the McMichaels and their back and forths and how they fail at something so they blame black people. Black people shouldn't really be around here, blame me more black folks. Black folks are savages, they ruin everything. What do you think was going through their heads when they saw Ahmed running down the street? You think they assumed he was up to no good? Do you think they cared whether or not he was innocent or not? I think their actions showed whether or not they cared. But what about William Bryan? He was the guy who was filming and was just a part of the chase. He can't be that racist, he's just hanging out with a couple friends. Here's William Bryan. She has her, uh, he's talking about his daughter, by the way. She's dating a black guy, she was excited to tell her dad. Probably not, but hopefully. She has her inward now, talking about his daughter. I've been calling it for a while, not surprised, is what he told uh, the situation when there's another person he was discussing with it. In another message, Vaughn said on Wednesday that Brian called his daughter a quote sociopath for her dating choices. Again, that horrific black guy that she was dating. Also, Brian had a horrific running joke with a friend about serving as a quote grand marshal of a Martin Luther King Jr. Day parade, which he also referred to as a monkey parade. I think the joke is that he would never do that because he doesn't care for black people or MLK Day is what the FBI agent told the jury. 
So I mean, ask yourself, were these three, uh, did these three have negative thoughts and comments unnecessarily about black folks that mean absolutely nothing with reality? You guys decide that and try and figure out whether or not they're the ones who committed this crime based off of the fact that Ahmed was black. And by the way, the name calling, the savages, the N words, the monkeys, and all this stuff, and they destroy everything. This is the thing that we always have to have this discussion or surrounding. It's just a word. All he said was the N word. You know, rappers say that. In this kind of context, when they want to talk about how they then, after saying the N word, they destroy things, they're savages, they don't, they don't deserve to be here, um, they should have been dead long ago. When you couple that with the N-word, I think you get a nice clear picture of what they think about black folks and what they would like to do to them. And when they get that opportunity, because you know they got the gun right on their hip because Second Amendment rights for overthrowing the government slash killing people that I don't think should exist. They pull out their guns and they act on all of those thoughts. Because eventually it has to get spent somewhere. It can't just stay bottled up. This is how these folks react. This is why racial slurs and hate speech are a thing that should be demeaned, talked down, and these folks should be run back into their corners. In this case, in prison for the rest of their lives. So good riddance, see you, peace.